What is happening there, citizens of the Reject Nation? We are going to watch today from our buddy Heavy Spoilers, Black Panther Wakanda Forever, original script, break down everything we know. Joining me today, John Humphrey, how are you? I am excited to hear what was originally intended. How are you, sir? I'm excited to learn, too. Black Panther Week is what we call it. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, leave a like. That'd be very much appreciated. Also, make sure to subscribe to Heavy Spoilers. He deserves it. Let's get to it. Okay, so Wakanda Forever's original script is something I think it's impossible not to wonder about in the wake of the movie's release. Due to Chadwick Boseman's death, the production was massively changed, with Ryan Coogler having to deal with the monumentous task of rewriting the entire thing from the ground up because yeah. of the actor's passing. However, due to interviews in the Black Panther Wakanda Forever podcast, we now have a fair Dog idea tag. of what was going to be in it. In this video, we're going to be going through everything we know was in the original plan and also our general thoughts about it. I do want to say really quick before we even proceed with this video, I am still wildly impressed with the cohesive movie they were able to pull off with having to deal with such a left turn in oh. their lives and, 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 a, and an emotional one. You know, when you're writing one of these, it's, 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 a, it's a really big task already as it is and have to pivot to this degree and to get what they turned out. That should not be overlooked. Even if you don't like the movie that much, I'm like, you shouldn't overlook the fact of the task they had at hand. So, it's an achievement. A Chadwick's death looms largely over the film, with Coogler stating that he and the cast put their love and grief into every aspect of the movie. It's felt. The Weekly Planet recently touched upon ah. what the director experienced when Off finishing them. the first draft, buddy. and we now know from the official Black Panther podcast that Coogler actually sent this off to Chadwick. When discussing the script, he said, I had just finished it. My last conversation with him was calling him and asking if he wanted to read it before I got notes from the studio. That was the last time we spoke, and he passed maybe a couple of weeks mm. after I finished. Wow. Coogler has since gone on to say that, though he never suspected Chadwick had cancer at the time, in retrospect, he could tell something was off. During the filming of the first movie, he stated that Chadwick would seem tired from time to time, and that he'd need to take breaks more often than usual in some days. We now know what Chadwick was battling with, and looking at his performance, it's actually incredible that he got through it all with the pain that he was in. Now, when discussing their last conversation, Coogler said, He was tired. I could tell he was tired. I'd been trying to get hold of him for a few days. I could tell something was up. But he was joking and laughing, talking about how he was planning a wedding in South Carolina, talking oh. about the people he was going to invite. And then he said he didn't want to read it because he didn't want to get in the way of whatever notes the studio might have. So he was like, it's better if I read it later. But I found Ooh. out later that he was too tired to read anything. It's wow. devastating to find Dang. this out. And it's clear that he influenced how they handled T'Challa's passing due to him fighting his disease in secret. That's pretty freaking crazy, you know, re reflecting on that. Yeah, like When you're filming one of these movies, it's already such a massive toll on the body. It, a lot of times it's like it's 16, 18 hour days. Top of that too, he's the lead actor who has to stay in like peak physical shape for this kind of character. So naturally, like people will be tired. Naturally, these things that he's saying he was having issues with or that people observed, they're going to come up. But you can just imagine the extremity and the strain it must have taken on his body and the fact that he didn't even like talk about it with people. Like it was his choice to not talk about it. It's just wild. Oh yeah, it was just an amazing amount of grace to then be like, hey, I am not going to tell you, I'm not going to worry you, but also I'm going to meet myself at my ability and I can't read this but i'm not gonna make it about me i'm just gonna yeah. make it about encouraging you to take that script and keep on moving with it it's crazy to think that he would have passed just after that because yeah especially planning a wedding on top of it not cluing anybody into what was about to happen it makes you ponder like did he choose not to read it because he thought he would actually pass or was it just because of how he was solely just feeling at the time we'll never know cbr recently reported that chadwick did in fact get the chance to read it though and that Letitia oh. Wright heard through the grapevine that the actor had been making fun of how long it was. He'd been <laughs> told that it was over 300 pages, which would make it one of the longest Ooh, wow. MCU movies ever. This carries... People uh, already thought it was long. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wakanda forever, forever, forever. Interestingly, though, we now know that the original version also dealt with the themes of grief too. In an interview with Inverse, Coogler laid out the entire plan, and the first thing he talked about was the grief that the movie tackled with. Mm. However, this was T'Challa dealing with his own grief of the snap and the time that was lost. When Thanos snapped away half of all life in the universe, T'Challa was one of the unlucky ones that were taken. 
and this would have left the throne empty for five years. Kugler said that the movie was going to address this directly, and that its tone would be similar to what we got in the final release. When going over this, Ryan said, The character was going to be grieving the loss of time, you know, coming back after being gone for five years. As a man with so much responsibility to many, coming back after a forced five years away, that's what the film was tackling. He was grieving time he couldn't get back, grief was a big part of it. Kugler stated that Shiri was snapped away too, and that they would both return with this feeling of loss. Yeah, that would have been a very fascinating tale to tell, especially because it doesn't really feel like the MCU has been really dealing with a story that, that has that, when that is such a big thing of loss and something to grieve, you know? I, I think of those stories of people who do wake up out of uh, like a coma or something after so many years and the things they missed out on or being away in prison or something like that, you know? Like you're missing out on life, watching how so many things change and develop to what you might have been able to do differently if you had been around. Like there, there are so many interesting concepts of grief one could have done if Black Panther Wakanda Forever was always meant to be the, the end of phase four exploring that as the topic for your final film of phase four would have made the whole package feel that much more complete and would have made it even more have it make more sense why it would be the end of phase four that's a really good point because yeah we've seen it in these little fits and bursts that are always so striking but the more films you get away even if the timeline is still pretty close it feels like the further you get away from that event so that would have been a, a, a beautiful way to thematically cap off this phase but at the same time it doesn't seem like it would be anywhere near as impactful as what this was yeah i'd trade i'd trade the current circumstances of course. back <laughs> of course we haven't really dealt with what happened in those five years yeah. There's been minor moments like the Ronan plot in the Disney plus Hawkeye show, but beyond that, it's something we know very little about. It's meant to be a completely depressing time too, with Haywood and WandaVision saying they had to do dark things in order to survive. This ended up making him work to bring Vision back to life, so that planet Earth had its own protector. Kugler said that Wakanda Forever would tackle this idea too, and that an element of the final film was laced throughout this early draft. In that we watch as Franz attempts to steal vibranium from the Wakandans at one of their research labs. The original script had elements of this as well, with the fact that T'Challa was gone for five years, causing big issues. Yeah, kind of because still the weak. kingdom didn't have a Black Panther to protect it, several government entities had tried to intrude and attack in order to gain the precious material for themselves. Killmonger destroyed all of the sacred herbs, and because of this they couldn't pass the mantle on to anyone else. The nation had no protector, and this put even more guilt onto the shoulders of T'Challa. He returned to find Wakanda in the midst of a cold war with the UN, desperate to gain vibranium. The film, of course, ended with T'Challa opening up Wakanda to the world, and he would have to deal with the fact that they had betrayed him. Though Michael B. Jordan's return isn't mentioned in any of the interviews, I think this is because of spoilers that it could bring to people going to see the film. Damn, you know, that would have been a cool-ass movie. Mm -hmm. that was, <laughs> yeah, yeah right. like, the way it's being laid out here, I'm going, that really would have been a great movie as someone struggling to it's like it's not their fault and that's such a relatable guilt feeling i think it's not your fault <laughs> why you're you you were absent it's it's not your fault for this situation yet the burden of responsibility and the pain of guilt still really weighs heavy you know watching as one of the most powerful nations though arguably the most powerful nation in the world is now weakened because of your absence and and is lacking guidance and having to regain all that i still feel like the wakanda forever subtitle would have been fitting and i can still see all the threads now from the film that we actually did get of how you they would rework it for the film that we did ultimately get that but i could see how it could have been part of the original story now too because that would have been a it would have been a very compelling commentary <laughs> to, yeah. to have done because yeah. he would have returned to like a, a more temporary version of the circumstances that we do see here and two to build upon the first movie i feel like a lot of people said like it's a great ensemble and chadwick is great but i think that would have taken t'challa as a character even more introspective even even more personal and dived even further into just chadwick's incredible range as an actor i think that he would have appeared in the film in some form or another he wanted to take the fight to the world and make wakanda known through the use of force T'Challa, on the other hand, wanted it to be peaceful, and I can't help but think seeing hashtag Killmonger was right <laughs> might make him question his own leadership abilities. T'Challa was very much forced into being king by the sudden death of his father, and though he beat M'Baku for the throne, his reign had been marked by a lot of turmoil. We of course had Killmonger usurping him, and then Thanos attacking Wakanda. 
So it's a lot to deal with and him failing to protect his nation would be another big thing that I think would have added to the guilt. Definitely, yeah. The villain of the movie yeah, was yeah. always going to be Namor, with Kugler stating that he was God. always the antagonist. Black Panther and Namor have fought several times in the comics before, with both Atlantis and Wakanda going to war with each other. In the comics, Namor and T'Challa's rivalry was first introduced in the 1970s, but when we look at the timeline of the Marvel Universe, they fought long before that. The first battle happened during World War II, and over the decades they've had an uneasy alliance that's constantly, constantly broken. There's been several tense exchanges with them, and pretty much every time they talk, there's a chance things could kick off. Black Panther and Namor are some of the only Marvel characters that are actually rulers, and it's not like when Iron Man attacks somewhere because he isn't the leader of a country. They, however, That's are, point. and therefore every act is seen as something that can destabilize the peace on the political landscape. Interestingly, Shuri and Amor fought each other during Civil War II, which may have provided basis for the final cut. The tidal wave scene was there too, with this being a major attack that Namor launched. Because of this, I'm guessing that Ramonda died in the original version of the script, with that starting a streak of vengeance within the King T'Challa. The final release ends with Shuri realizing that vengeance is consuming her, and this is a line that calls back to T'Challa saying it in Civil War. Yeah, you know, I think one of the things that does on a just a pure fan level that does bum me out is it's like how not not it's definitely not a one on one comparison, but how uh, Iron Man's arch nemesis is the Mandarin. And we didn't really get to see that here. It was setting it up for T'Challa to fight his arch nemesis. We didn't get to see it at all, you know. <laughs> and, yeah. I, and I wish we, there is that part. It's like down the road one day. Imagine these Marvel movies will one day get remade, you know. Sure. And I think Winston Duke was even talking about that recently. There'll be a time in the future where we do get to see the T'Challa versus Namor. It's something that I'm like, oh yeah, that would have been great to see just them two fighting each other. Yeah, and those two actors in particular. Actors in particular, Because you, yeah. you could go, well, in 15 years, you know, <laughs> little T'Challa can take him on. Yeah. But it's not the same thing for this timeline. No. Yeah, I think that a similar motif might have happened once more, with T'Challa again realizing that this will just start a cycle of violence. M'Baku warns of Wakanda and Talokan devolving into nations of eternal war, which I think may have been a theme that was apparent in the original version. I do think that by the sounds of it, the basic backbone of the film would have been the same, with T'Challa questioning his leadership, which does get replaced by Shuri questioning her own skills and abilities. To her, the fact that she couldn't make a herb is her basically thinking that she led to his death, and though that's not the case, I think this motif would have mirrored the failure T'Challa felt about his own kingdom. Unfortunately, we'll never know what the original script would have played out like due to the death of Chadwick Boseman, but I personally think that the final result perfectly handles his passing. Grief is a central theme to it, and it drives the characters and their actions in the movie. Definitely. So definitely. is gone, his presence is felt throughout, and we of course end knowing that his legacy carries on. Either way, there's lots to unpack from this, and obviously let me know your thoughts on the script details and your general thoughts on the movie too. Thank you, Paul, for putting that together. Uh, yeah, that was really uh, insightful to know. I That's didn't know most of that. <laughs> That's pretty crazy. Yeah, that would have been an interesting-ass film. Not going to lie, that would that would have been great, and I wish we lived in the timeline where we did get that movie. The timeline that we do live on, I think we, we got the best-case scenario of a film. Mm -hmm. um, Agreed. Which I know some people don't agree with him. But <laughs> where we stand. Ladies and gentlemen, follow Paul. Leave a like, subscribe, click that bell. Last but not least, uh, let's end this video off with a Fox. 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 You've been a patron of ours for 26 whole months. That is a loyal, super sexy reject right Sexiest. there. Two years you've been doing this, and uh, I want to say thank you. You've gifted us with other things before, more than just your generous pledge. You've gifted us with actual awesome items that we have mm -hmm. definitely frequently used. And then on top of that, too, you gifted us with just a great energy and personality to share with us. So thank you, Fox, for being part of our lives for so long. Yeah. And um, I pre we genuinely appreciate the support, and uh, I, it feels unconditional. So <laughs> thank you for being you, and I hope you have a great holiday season because you've earned it. You have you've deserve earned it. it. You deserve it. For being loyalty pays off, and now you go and reap those benefits. Chill on the beach or something like that. <laughs> no refunds. Uh, but man, I love you. <laughs>